Batman arguably has the greatest rogues gallery in all of comics. His foes range from the well-known homicidal lunatics like the Joker and the Riddler to lesser known but nonetheless excellent knaves like Hugo Strange and the Man Bat. There's also a category of villains that are completely farcical like the Polka Dot Man and Crazy Quilt. In the 1990s Batman the Animated Series shone the spotlight on villains that were well known to comic book readers but less familiar to mainstream audiences. Characters like Two-Face, Killer Croc and Ra's al Ghul, all of whom had never been seen outside of the comic books at the time and have since gone on to feature in major blockbuster movies. However, while some of the absurd villains like the Mad Hatter made the leap, many Batman villains of the campy Silver Age of comic books did not feature in the show, at least until the time of the new Batman adventures. I've previously talked about Calendar Girl and how she was a mashup of two villains, Calendar Man and the Mannequin, but there is another TNBA villain that was inspired by a Silver Age villain that was too goofy to appear in BTAS, and that is Thomas Blake, known as Catman. Kicking things off, let's look at the original version of Catman. Making his first appearance in Detective Comics 311, Thomas Blake is a wealthy socialite that gets his thrills from taming big cats. However, now that he's mastered his hobby, he's starting to lose interest. One of his peers at the social club regales him with a recent story from the newspapers, adding that Batman's life must be far from boring. This ignited an idea within Blake. He will adopt the costumed identity of Catman, taking inspiration from the recently retired Catwoman with a walloping dose of sexism chucked in, and will test his skills against Batman. He argues that he shouldn't become a vigilante because Batman's already doing that job. Far better to prove he's the better man by defeating Batman. This dude reeks of insecurity and is little more than a pale imitation of Batman, with his Catmobile and his Catarangs and even a subterranean base below his home. If he was truly dedicated to the cat theme, he would have made his base of operations on top of a pile of clean laundry. Although, probably not the best hiding place now that I say that out loud. We learn later on that Blake had lost much of his fortune through gambling, which is another indicator that Blake fills the void in his life with risky habits and hobbies. One thing I have to give Catman credit for is his devotion to the gimmick. While his costume is a vibrant orange and yellow, I suppose evoking images of ginger tabby cats, the most insane of all cat breeds, although I have to wonder if he's trying to channel the look of a tiger. He adds claws to the hands and feet and goes as far as adjusting his car's engine to make it sound like a cat's purr. And also look at that massive cat face hood ornament. Catman is absolutely a Batman tribute act and he would develop an obsession with Batwoman. Catman recognized that Batman would never marry Batwoman, he was already married to his mission, and felt that with her by his side, they could rule Gotham. Given the fact that Batman knew Thomas Blake, and his boasts of being the king of cats, it didn't take a huge leap of deduction for Batman to figure out who Catman was. When confronted at his lair, Catman mounted a robotic cat to attack Batman and Robin. Batman defeated the Robo-Cat by throwing a bucket of bolts in its mouth, causing its gears to clog up. Catman fled on foot, but in his attempt to leap over an underground river, he slipped and fell into the river and seemed to drown. Of course, whenever a comic book story seems to end with the death of a villain, nine times out of ten, you can be confident that they will return. And return he did. In his next appearance, Catman targeted Batwoman to try and persuade her to give up chasing Batman and instead become his queen. Batwoman inadvertently helped Catman, leading Batman to question her loyalty, driving her into the arms of Catman, which of course was a ruse to track him down. Once again, Catman seemed to meet his end when trying to escape, this time crashing his speedboat. It's interesting how his deaths always involve water. I guess it's because most cats really don't like getting wet. In his next appearance, we would learn why Catman was seemingly able to evade death. The material used in his orange cape came from a Polynesian artifact that had mystical powers, effectively giving him nine lives. Once Catman realized this, he became bolder and less cautious, making his escape through means that would normally kill a person, swinging off of electricity masts, diving headfirst into shallow water, and so on. Catman was defeated after Batwoman reclaimed the Catwoman costume, made from the same materials as Catman's cape, and used up the remaining lives through performing some deadly stunts. Apparently Catman and Batwoman shared the nine lives rather than having nine lives each. Without the safety net of his death-defying cape, Catman was no match for Batman and Robin. Catman would make a handful of appearances between then and 1992 when Batman the Animated Series debuted, however, 
Catman would not feature in the original run of the show. In 1993, the comic book Catman was reimagined within the pages of Legends of the Dark Knight. In the story Heat, a serial killer dressed as a cat strikes during a heat wave. His new costume is entirely black and is armed with blades that he uses to slice up his victims. The fact that his costume is all black and makes him resemble a Black Panther leads to the mayor accusing the African American community of being responsible, which, when coupled with the heat wave, ignites racial tensions in Gotham. This new take on Thomas Blake is more of a Travis Bickle type. His only interactions with the world in his civilian identity come through the television. He watches sensationalist news programs that clearly enrage him, and he takes particular issue with a scantily clad weather woman. Blake's issues can be traced back to his childhood, where his single mother locked him in a cupboard and would whip him with his departed father's belt. These over-the-top acts of violence from his mother completely warped him. Initially, he targeted the wealthy, murdering them after pilfering the contents of their safes, but he picks up a taste for murdering women and soon forgets about the robberies, instead targeting women he deems to be promiscuous. The story is very blunt and really seems like an excuse for the legendary Russ Heath to draw scantily clad women. This characterization wouldn't be used again outside of this comic, perhaps because it was a bit much. Most writers would use Catman as an example of a failed supervillain with a silly gimmick, at least until the early 2000s when he was revitalized as part of the Secret Six, but that's an entirely separate matter. As I mentioned earlier, with slightly laxer rules around what could and couldn't be shown on television, the new Batman adventures brought in some of the more obscure and slightly silly DC characters. Etrigan the Demon, the Creeper, and Firefly, to name but a few. While those three characters were pretty faithful to their comic book counterparts, Catman needed a bit of work. Now obviously a kid's cartoon can't focus on a deviant slasher that targets women, and the bright and silly version from the Silver Age didn't fit the tone of the show either, so what they settled on was something in the middle. Thomas Blake is the leader of a cat-worshipping cult in Gotham. They live in a palatial mansion with big cats roaming their grounds. One of the things I find most interesting is that the followers of his cult are all dressed like the Heat version of Catman, wearing black costumes with claws attached to their hands. Blake doesn't wear a costume, instead he wears a smart black suit and wanders around holding a white cat, immediately evoking memories of the James Bond villain Blofeld. This cat man doesn't sully his own hands, instead he sends his followers to do the dirty work. As we see in the episode Cult of the Cat, Batman crosses paths with the cult after Catwoman steals a statue from them, and Blake's henchmen chase her across town to get it back. These murderous assassins are too much for Catwoman to handle alone, so she brings in Batman to help her out. One of the things I really enjoy about this episode is how playful Catwoman is, despite the pressure she's under. Mm, or maybe because of it. She's flirty and teases Batman, despite needing his help. It's actually quite endearing. When Catwoman is captured and taken to Blake to be punished, she switches on the charm and worms her way into the cult. She's not at all sincere in her wish to join, she's just trying to avoid getting stabbed. The unnamed female cultist can see through Catwoman's deception, but Blake is completely oblivious. My favourite scene of the episode is when Batman turns up at the mansion to rescue Catwoman, but finds that she's already got herself out of trouble and is in the process of robbing the place again. Catwoman quickly betrays Batman to seem like she is loyal to Blake. However, when Blake attempts to feed Batman to his massive genetically modified cat beast in the basement, Catwoman puts a stop to the deception and shows her true colours. Blake attempted to go one-on-one -on -one with Batman, but he was no match for him, and is last seen being carted away on a stretcher after suffering some serious injuries after getting knocked off of a ledge by his mutated beast. So, yeah, the purpose of this episode was to flesh out the character of Catwoman. Blake is never explicitly referred to as Catman, but for those in the know, it's pretty obvious. He's a pretty decent mashup of the two versions of Catman. Wealthy Thomas Blake from the classic comics? Check. Weird obsession with a woman in Batman's life? Check. The black costumes of the serial killer version? Check. He's not a significant villain by any means, but he's a great example of how the writers on the show changed the source material to suit their needs. Before I wrap up, it'd be remiss of me not to mention the other DCAU Catman. This one made his first appearance in the Batman Adventures comic book, which tied into Batman the Animated Series. This Catman was a partner to Catwoman and helped her steal a diamond before he was apprehended by Robin. This Catman was Batman himself. In Batman Adventures 34 to 36, Batman would have all of his traumatic memories removed, effectively resetting him to the mental state he was in before his parents were murdered. Hugo Strange had developed a machine that would remove his own painful memories of his son's death, but during a struggle Batman was accidentally hit by the machine's ray. The ray removed all of his trauma and stored it within a diamond. Batman is pretty much defined by his trauma. 
he wouldn't be who he is without it, and this story really emphasises that point. With his memories missing, Catwoman took the opportunity to manipulate him. She created a matching costume for him and told him he was her partner in crime. Batman had no reason not to believe her. After all, he woke up with a sore head in her bed. As far as he could tell, she had been looking after him. Batman, without his trauma, is playful, innocent and a bit naive. But he's very clearly happy and more than willing to use his abilities to help Catwoman. And that makes it all the more sad when Robin turns up and sets Batman on the path to recovering his traumatic memories. Still, it was nice to see him happy for a little while, even if it was all based on a lie. I think that this version of Catman, while short-lived, was probably the best one we've seen. At least until Gail Simone got her hands on him for Secret Six in the early 2000s. Another man in a Catwoman costume would show up in Batman and Robin Adventures 16, another wealthy Thomas Blake Catwoman fanboy. But this version contradicts the TNBA Thomas Blake, and it's unlikely that there were two millionaires with cat fetishes running around Gotham with the same name, so it's probably best to disregard him. It's a fun story though, about mistaken identity and how Catwoman responds to unwanted affections, with deception and betrayal. I find it incredibly ironic that Catman started out as a deliberate imitation of Batman and the very best version of him would turn out to be Batman himself. Okay, that's it for this week's essay. If you liked the video, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, leave a comment, tell all your friends about me. You know how YouTube works. If you really enjoyed the video and have the means, please consider making use of the thanks button to send a buck or two my way because every little helps. I offer channel memberships for $1.99 a month. This will get you early access to my weekly video essay, priority responses to your comments, members only videos, custom emojis, and an icon on your profile indicating that you're one of my people. Next week, I'll be taking a look at another obscure villain from the 1950s and how the writers on Batman the Animated Series completely reinvented him to create one of the most disturbing episodes in the original run of the show. It was an episode that was deemed so creepy that one of the executive producers wanted to cancel it. We're going to talk about Lloyd Ventrix, the Invisible Man, Mojo, from the episode See No Evil. Hope to see you then.